In this lesson, we're going to look at stair and railing types and their properties. So to get started, let's create a new project. And we're going to base that project again on the architectural template. If you're using Revit 2014 and your screen looks like mine, simply click on the architectural template link on the left, or you can click the large R in the upper left, hover over New, and click Project. On the New Project window, make sure you choose the architectural template and then click OK. Now to see these various stair and railing types and their properties, we first need to start a stair command. So navigate to the circulation panel on the ribbon, it's almost in the middle, and click stair. It's not important for this example what type or method you use to create the stair. We're just going to look at the properties and the types of stairs that can be created. So over on the left in the property area on my screen, the property of the type of stair I'm looking at right now is the actual assembled stair with a 7 inch max riser 11 inch tread. Below that are the other properties or constraints, if you will, dimensions and various other values. The constraints list basically where the stair attaches on its lowest level to the highest level. So as I can see on my screen, the base level is level one, the top level is level two, meaning it's gonna go from level one to level two. Zero is set for both offsets. Now, if there was a physical number there, positive or negative, it means that the stair would go above level one by that unit of measurement or below it. Same thing for the top level. There's a setting for multi-story stairs. And we'll look at multi-story stairs a little later in one of the subsequent lessons. And that's typically used when you're talking about developing staircases in commercial buildings that span multiple floors. And there's positives as to why you would use those types. There's dimensions, where we can look at either predefined dimensions or manually defined dimensions. There's comments, there's marks, and this gets into some of the annotation and text, and we'll look at that in the annotation chapters. And there's also phasing. This gets into if you were actually writing or creating a timeline for development of your building. You can say the stairs is to be applied or developed or built in this phase. It's also for tracking of material too, as far as delivery, scheduling, project management, if you will. Now, other types of stairs and railings that you can actually use. Where it reads in the property area, assembled stair. You notice it's a drop down. You go ahead and click that. On my screen, you'll notice there's three other types of stairs I could create right now in three categories. Categories being assembled stair, cast in place, and precast. Three types are the seven inch max riser, the monolithic and the precast. So those are available for me to use right now to start creating different types of stairs, whether straight run or winder. But there's other ones you could use too as well, same as you could use other types of chairs, doors, and windows in your designs. Go ahead and click anywhere in the white area of your screen to actually collapse that drop-down list. Now to see these other types of stairs that are actually loaded in this template that we created this project from, we're going to look in the project browser in the lower left. So move your mouse down to that area and scroll down to the section or the grouping called Families. Click the plus to the left of it and then scroll down to where you see Stairs. Click the plus to the left of it. These are the other types of stairs that are currently listed in this project based on the template that you created the project from. Each one has a plus sign, and if you click the plus sign to the left of that, it'll show the type of stair in that given stair overview of what it actually could be created with. Now again, each of these can be modified and or duplicated into a new type of staircase. Same is true for railings. So if you were to go above stairs and look at railings, you can see the different types of railings that are already loaded into this template. Now, if you had other railings and stairs that existed in other projects or in other files, other libraries, you can always insert those in using the same methods you would insert any other component into Revit. And we'll look at that a little more in depth when we get into some of the custom chapters to creating custom types or specialty types of staircases. To collapse any of the menus and get back to where you were at before, simply click in the white area of your screen and the property area will be updated displaying the property for the active type of stair. Lastly, since we're not going to draw any stairs for this example, just simply click the red X on your ribbon and that will cancel the actual stair command. So this was the overview on the different types of stairs and railings and the properties that go along with those. 
Up next, we'll look at two different methods on how to create your stairs, stair by component and stair by sketch.